our final neuropathic pain segment, we're going to look at painful diabetic neuropathy. That's a condition that may afflict more than 15% of the 25 million people in the United States with diabetes. That's a lot of folks. Now, because this condition is often underreported and under treatment, clinicians as well as patients would benefit from increased awareness of clinical PDN characteristics, key clinical pearls for assessing and diagnosing this condition, and lastly, any useful information on effective approaches to the pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic treatment of this condition. So with that need, it's like I got you guys here. And a guy who's not here, but we're going to talk to him next. Dr. Argoff, what are the symptoms and the presentation of PDN in patients with diabetes? Well, there really isn't so much a difference between type 1 and type 2 in terms of the, the, the pre presentation of diabetic neuropathy. Um, what the, the, there are many different diabetic neuropathies, which is sometimes lost. Um, but the most common diabetic neuropathy is the distal symmetric sensory motor neuropathy that affects usually in a symmetric manner the, uh, the most distal uh, aspects of the lower extremities. It's the so-called, and then sometimes the upper extremities, the so-called stocking glove distribution. Having said that, and since I mentioned other types of neuropathies, there are also more localized um, uh, mononeuropathies, for example, affecting the sciatic nerve distribution, femoral nerve distribution, thoracic radicular uh, onsets, and so on. Um, having said that, um, the, the two main groups of, of patients are those who have pain and diabetic neuropathy and may present or the, uh, without with, with, with numbness and loss of sensation but no pain, as well as those who have very painful diabetic neuropathy. And the interesting thing about this is that um, it, it's very difficult to predict who's going to develop what. There are symptoms associated with diabetic neuropathy that are considered positive symptoms, uh, crawling sensations, numb, uh, tingling, um, a sense of, of burning, um, uh, uh, just sharp, uh, out of nowhere, electrical-like sensations. Then there are the negative symptoms that often drive people with diabetic neuropathy um, more batty, more crazy than the, than the more positive symptoms. Numbness, loss of, sensa loss of sensation. Uh, the numbness can really, really be um, a, a, a terrible thing for people. Well, let's go over some of the, the criteria and some of the tools that we have for classifying and staging uh, PDN or, or post-diabetic neuropathy. Uh, what are they so, and why are they useful? So the uh, good old-fashioned physical examination is uh, very, very, very important. Um, so taking history um, is, is, is important, examining individuals, uh, noting whether or not that person has a presence of reflexes, loss of reflexes. Um, uh, the presence of reflexes in the face of someone with a painful diabetic neuropathy may indicate that that person has what's called a small fiber neuropathy in which the larger nerve fibers which control reflexes and um, other aspects of, of sensation um, are lost. Uh, I, mean, I mean, are not lost, but are preserved, excuse me. Um, whereas in a small fiber neuropathy, um, it's the smaller uh, A delta and C fibers, uh, the, uh, which are, le uh, are, are subserve pain and temperature sensation, which are more affected. Um, there are ways to assess that at the bedside. A tuning fork can be heated up and, you know, gross temperatures, the ability to perceive um, um, Warm temperatures or hot temperatures versus cool temperatures can be done. Reflexes, as I mentioned, a good old-fashioned um, sensory examination with, with either the NeuroPen, which is a formal machine, which is a, 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 a spring, spring device that gives the same pinprick sensation load every time, or breaking off a, 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 um, a Q-tip and, and be using the edge of a Q-tip as your pinprick or, or a sterile and clean needle. But any way you look at it, uh, you can t assess pinprick. Uh, f you need to assess for position sense, vibratory sense. These are all bedside, easy to do, should be done um, types of, of tests. Then we move on to electrophysiological tests, EMG, nerve conduction velocity assessments. The caveat here is that if somebody has a small fiber neuropathy, which is the most common type of diabetic neuropathy, not the least common, not the rare, this is not a, 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 you know, a zebra, this is the more common presentation of painful diabetic neuropathy, um, they may have uh, preserved reflexes, but also normal nerve conductions and normal EMG findings, which may, tell, which may mean, and this is an important point, that, that they're being told by someone who doesn't realize that, th that small fiber neuropathy will result in such, that they, I'm sorry, your EMG shows you don't have a neuropathy, which is wrong. Um, un and unfortunately, patients are told that, and so they're wondering what's wrong with them. 
We have seen over the last decade or two the advent and use of uh, skin biopsy, three millimeter skin punch biopsies, which can be done routinely uh, in the office at the foot, calf, and thigh level. Uh, many commercial laboratories around the country now, and it's not a, a very harmful procedure, if at all, if it's done properly, and it's not a very expensive procedure either, uh, can be done to confirm the abnormalities of small nerve fibers in patients with diabetic neuropathy who are presumed to have a small fiber neuropathy. Well, you know, I used to